a job here. Hey everyone, welcome to our Hometown History Extra. I'm Jamie. And I'm Dami. And tonight we have Tom Davidson. He is an expert on the Lincoln Highway, but then also the Shoe House. So we thought we would bug him, ask him some questions about this really important structure that we're in. So if you missed it, we just filmed our first full episode of the Shoe House. It's episode 3.5, is available on Facebook, and eventually it'll be on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Takes us a couple production days to get that done. Um, so Tom, our first question is, what got you interested in the Shoe House? Sure. Um, initially, the main thing was its uh, location, proximity to the Lincoln Highway. And it's one of the um, best roadside attractions that people in York County can uh, drive by and see what it was like traveling in the early 20th century. Yeah. So you first got interested in the Lincoln Highway. Right. Okay, so for someone in their early teens, early 20s is watching this, it's a road, Tom. Why right. are you so interested in it? <laughs> well, um, in the uh, early 20th century, there weren't any roads. I mean, the roads that we had were dirt roads. Mm -hmm. And then they invented the automobile and people needed better roads to drive on. So the Lincoln Highway was established as the first coast-to-coast -coast highway between New York City and San Francisco in 1913. And in York County, it follows um, the old um, turnpike toll roads. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you think of the trans uh, how transportation evolved. It went from um, horse and wagon mm -hmm. to automobiles, and then eventually we're flying all around. But right. in those days, uh, travel was a luxury. Right. So, um, you know, just in general, I think um, early 20th century history is of interest to me, and a lot of people don't talk about it a lot for, right. for various reasons. But, uh, you know, this place uh, captures your imagination. It takes <laughs> yeah. you back to another time. Mm -hmm. And you were talking about Haynes early in his life was in California. He saw all kinds of buildings like this that were built to uh, represent something else so that people driving by would stop and take notice. Mm -hmm. um, just this historical marker out there, I've seen at least um, 10 people this afternoon stop mm. and take a picture of the marker yeah. and the shoe house. So um, Haynes built this here so people would notice it as they were driving down the Lincoln Highway and they would buy his shoes. So. so this historical marker, it's not an easy process. I mean, you drive around New York, I think New York has about 60 some historical markers? It, it does, and um, they're from various periods of history, and I like to think of them as um, just uh, reminders that people can go to, and it just starts a conversation about what that historical site uh, meant to our local history. Right. So, you know, we don't have that many regarding early 20th century history. And again, um, for me, the significant thing about this building is its architecture. Yeah, I'd say so, right? <laughs> architecture. So, so what do you think, do you know anything about the architect and the process behind, okay, here's the shoe, build right. me something like this, and then like, where do you even begin to get started? Right, I mean, the, the architect was a friend of, of Haynes's. Mm. And, um, you know, you do some research, and he was known locally. He, he uh, designed houses and things like that. But they shared a, a common interest in uh, horses and harness racing. He also lived in East York mm -hmm. and um, in Haynes Acres. So, you know, again, every, everyone he had involved in this project carried his vision to reality. He had local contractors build something they've never seen before mm -hmm. and uh, they all came together and um, you know the Rudy um, art glass uh, mm. stay, stay oh, glass that windows. Was stained glass windows. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah so you know it's just a celebration of what the community can build together Aww. which I think is neat. Uh, that's really beautiful. Yeah. Oh, oh <laughs> man. So the house I'm sure you were concerned when there's a transition from owners. It's always like, what's going to happen? Are they going to maintain the historical integrity of this, you know, gem that is your county? Right. 
So what do you think when you walk in here? I mean, as a, as a story, and again, I love it because you walk in and one thing you don't smell is like musk and it doesn't feel old. Right. It feels contemporary. There's modern elements to it. Dami was like, it kind of reminds me of your house because it has that like <laughs> rustic, you know, you. Cheap feel. <laughs> but, but there's also history everywhere. So sure. now that you're in here, what do you think? Sure. I, I think the wonderful thing is this initially was a guest house. Haynes never lived here, but he used it to promote his company, to uh, bring in newlyweds and, and retired couples, and he just uh, let them come here and have a break, have a mm. vacation. And uh, so as you go through here today, um, you know, I think um, they've preserved all the, con you know, the major construction uh, components of the property, and they've just updated it so a family today can Enjoy a break, enjoy a visit right. uh, mm -hmm. here in York County. Yeah. So that historical marker, you mm -hmm. were the mastermind behind it. <laughs> Explain to the audience, what, sure. what is that process like? Um, every year, or nearly every year, the Pennsylvania Historical and Museum Commission uh, opens up an opportunity for people to submit applications. And um, this, this year especially, they encouraged uh, smaller organizations to apply. So I thought it was a great opportunity to, um, again, elevate the historical significance of this property so that everyone can understand this isn't simply um, something unique to York County, but this is an example of architecture that we had across the country mm -hmm. along, the, along the road. and. Um, you know, when this was first built, you could see the Lincoln Highway. You could see Market Street from here. It was just fields, but you know, now the trees have grown up and mm -hmm. the buildings, um, you can't see uh, the Lincoln Highway, but it was built here because of the Lincoln Highway, because of all the traffic, because of, as you drove up and down the highway, there were signs saying, look for the Haines Shoe Bus. Mm -hmm. And you know, certainly he, um, gave a lot back to the community, but also as people stayed here, he would promote his business. Mm, right. You know, we were talking earlier about air conditioning, and one of the things he did is he gave out these lovely paper vintage fans. They weren't vintage at the time. <laughs> but I will give Jamie, I will give you the wholesome one of the mother and child. Oh, thank you, Tom. <laughs> and Dami, I will give you one. Uh, it's more of an Art Deco. Oh, thank you. So, looks a little nicer than your Civil War uh, reenactment thank costumes. Thank you. Thank you. And, you know, just any way possible, Haynes would. Uh, be promoting his business and he learned that you mentioned it through working with his mother mm -hmm. and um, you know when he was an outsider to York you know a lot of people mm -hmm. you know you talk about the different businesses in York they were um, built up people that had been here for generations you know he came to town he just did anything possible to get attention Mm -hmm. And people bought his shoes. <laughs> so, you know, he was remarkable in that way to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Maybe some of that was out of necessity being, um, you know, his mother being widowed uh, and working for, for his mother for so many years. But, you know, again, he, he always uh, wanted to have fun in anything mm -hmm. he did. And, you know, that led to his travels, that led to him building one-of-a-kind shoe houses. Uh, he actually had plans at one point to build another shoe-shaped house out in South Dakota where he really? had a ranch. And unfortunately, his second wife passed away mm. and then those plans kind of went away. Mm. But, um, you know, he's, um, you know, a um, remarkable character and we have this legacy here to uh, enjoy today because of it. Any idea what happened with his mom? She did remarry eventually. And, um, you know, moved, I think, to the Bahamas somewhere. I'd have oh. to go look at that. But, you know, again, she, she uh, was a very successful businesswoman. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was interesting, you were talking about uh, the different, um, maybe, help she gave him along the way as mm -hmm. he was traveling wherever. Right. Um, you know, when I was in college, I went with a group to Europe, and I could... When you were talking about that, I remember um, my father had passed away, and I was in Europe, and of course, 
ran out of money. Mm -hmm. So you call your mom and say, can you help me get home, wow. you know, kind of thing. Yeah. So it just brings back memories how, um, you know, at times we like adventure, but we also want to come home. Oh yeah. my goodness! That's, well, so one right that is one of my uh, last questions is when you there's like two different schools on how Haynes got to New York. Mm -hmm. One was that he was dating an heiress to right. business, you know, enterprise right. over in Lancaster County, and Peter Watt hooked him up in New York. The right. other is that he was just traveling through and broke down on his bicycle. Right. Which one do you believe? Um, there's probably some truth in both of them. You know any stories uh, that he told I think he was not so much interested in um, maybe all the details but more interested in um, the excitement of telling the story okay so you know he definitely was a I would say a PT Barnum type of yeah uh, that's what I got the vibe I got yeah. too yeah so um, you know whatever whatever fates brought him here to York he decided um, this was where he was going to make his home. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Tom, thank you so much for joining Hometown History. Yeah. Um, it, this is private property, but can you park alongside of the road to see the sign? You you can. It, it's not. There's not a lot of traffic, but you can carefully park alongside the road and you know take your picture and you can get the shoe house in the background. So yeah. that's why we placed the marker where we did and. Um, Hopefully, um, you know, as more people become aware of the opportunity to stay here, mm -hmm. maybe have out-of-town guests coming in, maybe you want to come here, um, you know, you can go online and you can uh, spend the night in a shoe house. So. <laughs> but plan now, because <laughs> since yeah. Naomi and Waylon uh, opened the property, every single weekend has been booked, and I can even personally testify, I tried to go on and like look at booking, and it is it is <laughs> so far booked out. That's so what we want to see. Right, <laughs> it, 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 try to come to York, come visit the shoe house. Yes. Thank you, Tom, for joining us. Thanks, Tom. Thank you.